Okay, hi. <laughs> um, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, I'm talking about a build tool. And uh, quickly about me, I'm Jan Christopher Vogt. I work at a company called X.AI in New York City. And we magically schedule meetings with artificial intelligence. And uh, you may know me, I, I co-authored Slick. Um, and I worked in Martin's lab for a few years. and. Uh, I've done the Composable Records Library and, and was a bit involved in Scala Forklift and Maven Search. Um, and well, we're 25 engineers at X.AI. We have a lot of Scala projects going on, and uh, there's a lot of need for builds. I do some open source stuff on the side, more builds. And that's why I started coming up with CBT. And basically, the idea is to have the room to explore some simpler approaches and more convenient approaches than I personally find SPT right now. I mean, SPT has done a, has done a lot of good things for the Scala ecosystem. It's been a big step forward from, from Maven and Ant, basically by providing access to writing your builds in a full programming language in Scala, um, and by implementing the incremental compiler, which has made our life a lot easier. Um, but so why would I build another build tool? Right, and I, but I, because I think there's some things that, that could be done easier, and maybe now it's the time to, to explore how we could do that. Um, so CBT is about the user experience of writing builds and running builds. It's rethought from the ground up. It's to be fast, um, to be simple, lightweight, and convenient, and easy to learn, understand, debug, and contribute to. So you really have something that's not in black, box, the magical thing, but you can have a personal, can personally relate to and actually understand what's going on. Um, why not use Gradle or Bazel or Maven or one of the other existing systems? Well, I think one of the things that SPT brought to the table that I like a lot is that you write your builds in a full programming language and you write it in the programming language that we write our other code in as well. And with all the benefits, type safety and the abstraction capabilities using the same libraries, um, so I want to write my builds in Scala. So, and there's only SPT right now, and now we have another one, CBT. So CBT, fun, fast, intuitive builds written in Scala. This is the agenda for today. I'll do a live demo first because nobody likes slides unless they kind of seen something else. Um, then I'll go in detail about the benefits I think these approaches have over what we have in SPT right now and the potential risks of using C S uh, CBT right now. I talk a little bit about the background, like how do I achieve these benefits, um, how to contribute to CBT, because that's actually very easy, even for Scala beginners. And what's next? So, live demo. Um, let's build something. And so I have an example project, kind of a little to-do of what I want to run through. There's no, no Scala code in there yet. The simplest thing you can do with CBT to execute some Scala code, to build something, is you just create a main method, a class with a main method. And I have a little helper in CBT because I do this a lot um, to just create this file. So just, it's, I mean, boring object main, def main, hello world. And now um, with CBT, you can just go into this, yeah, you can just go into this folder. There's the main method, uh, the main class. And you do CBT run. And we'll compile this thing <coughs> and run it. And once it's compiled, it's actually very quick to, to rerun it straight from the command line. It takes, uh, yeah, I run it straight from the shell. That's, that's my, oh, that's obvious. Um, right, so let's, let's improvise. Does that work? I think that's fine, actually. Right, so um, CBT run, looks into the folder you're in, compiles the Scala files in there, runs the main method if there is one. So basically, um, there are a few helpers that just make it very convenient to get started, but you have all the 
all the tools to to be very explicit about what's happening. But let's let's start with the with the simple things first. <laughs> um, right, and so it's very fast to do so. So CBT basically manages to to run through your stuff in less, less than 0 0.1 seconds. Um, okay, so let's uh, so we, now we've written some code. Let's let's go write a test. How do we integrate testing in in uh, with with the CBT build tool? Um, and there's again just for getting started a convention-based thing. Um, actually, CBT uses very few conventions because conventions always use something you have to learn, and they act somewhat magical. There are very small number of them for the most most convenient uh, most most common use cases. Uh, everything else is very explicit, but uh, for testing there is something. So I create a folder test, and I go into there. And the, one of the very fundamental building blocks of CBT that makes it very easy to use is that it's about composing builds, composing little builds in which in each of them the same rules uh, apply. And um, by composing them, you can build chains like, I need this to compile before this other thing. And in a way, the test and the main code have this relationship, right? Is there something that scratching something I can do something about, or? Okay, I'll I'll, ju <laughs> I'll just continue and we can see. Um, right. So um, in my test directory, which is a subdirectory of my main project now, um, the same rules count. So I can just do CBT tools. Uh, tools is a special command command in there that just gives you access to, to a few uh, convenient helper things. So we can in here do create main and just as we did in the in the main folder, same thing we can do cbt run hello world. Um, but now if we go back to the main folder and we in there we do cbt test, this basically looks at the test folder and do, do, does the run in there. But it also makes the stuff available in the class path. So you can access your main project sources from the test um, so now we can do something where in the main code, let's remove the main method and just create a case class. And in the test, which has now been created, we'll just use this. So let's say we'll just... Um, put, an, put an assertion in here. Um, So uh, foo was a class with two members. One is i, which is the integer. So we just, let's just compare that it's actually the, the same value. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and this is this is like a, a super simple way to just you create a new project. You just want to get it to work quickly, right? And m put some assertion and not even use a test framework yet. Just quickly put an assertion. Now it works, and then next and the next step, you can actually, if you need something more sophisticated, you can add a add a test framework like Scala Test or something, which is supported as well. Okay, so that's that's the most basic way to use it, where you don't even have to write any build scripts. Of course, obviously that doesn't scale to needing dependencies and all that. So now is the time we actually let's add some dependencies and see how we can actually create a proper build. Um, so let's just assume that. In our main code, we need some library. Let's import, uh, just as an example, ammonite, ammonite ops. Um, and obviously, if I try to compile now, or if I try to run in the main project, I would get a compile error because I don't have it on my, uh, yeah, available yet. Um, but there's helpful to kind of give you the template for, for a build file. Um, you create a basic build. Now it created this file, build, build.scala. Um, <clears throat> and a build in, in CBT is a class. And what you generally call tasks in other build tools is just the members of the class. So basically, the, what CBT does is really just gives you a way to, straight from the command line, call methods of your build class. Um, and a build file would look like this. You import CBT. Um, 
some, some Java, JDK, and Scala library stuff, and you extend basic build, which <coughs> now allows you to, yeah, first of all, it allows you to define tasks. So I'll just define a method called foo, and now I can call this method from the command line, but we need to remove this for now because otherwise it doesn't compile. So now I can go ahead and cbt foo, and it said hello. So you have a very easy way to kind of create tasks and just, just call them. Also have tasks depend on other tasks because they're method. They can call each other, right? There's a way to have to, to uh, cache methods because some, some stuff is expensive, like compiling or downloading stuff or code generation. So there's a, a very simple way to, to wrap a method into, into a cached thing. Um, but I'll, I'll not show that right now. Okay, so we created our own tasks task, but uh, yeah, we don't care about this right now. Let's add a dependency. Um, Dependencies itself is also a member, and by cu to customize your dependencies, you just override it. Um, you take the super dependencies and add something on your own. There are multiple styles. So first of all, this resolver of Maven Central, it's, a CBT makes it explicit here which URLs you actually try to resolve stuff from. It's not some magical lookup. Um, so in this case, we create a resolver from Maven Central. This is a Java URL, Java net URL. You can ha add other URLs. There are a few hard-coded ones. Like you could do sonar type releases. Um, so you can kind of really nicely customize what way you're resolving stuff from. But in this case, we just use Maven Central, and um, we'll just use uh, I, that's like in the example. I just put MNI ops here. Um, you can use the the SPT style DSL to create the dependencies, just so it's easy to copy and paste from from existing documentation or something. But uh, generally, I generally recommend using this more beginner-friendly thing. We, everybody kind of, I think here, the first time we saw the per percent percent, we were like, what's that? So let's kind of make it easier for beginners, maybe over time, but you can still copy and paste. Okay, now we added a dependency. Um, so now we should be able to import in our main code from this dependency and not get a compile error. So CBT, um, let's say test. Right, so it did, it did actually work, it did the import. And you can obviously um, also in the test file import the same thing because the class path is just propagated um, to the tests. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's say for our tests, we want some dependencies as well that are only for the test. Um, in SPT you have these scopes, right? So you can, something can be scoped to the tests or can be scoped to the main thing. Um, in, in CBT, your test project, your test folder is just a build. So you can do the same thing, create a build file with the dependencies in there. Um, so we go into test, we do CBT tools, create. Basic build could, would be one thing, but in this case we take build build, which is a slight variant which connects the test folder with the, uh, with the parent folder so that the it compiles the parent folder, uh, the, the main directory, or the main sources before. But it's actually, um, oh no, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm actually wrong. Uh, we are doing a, we're doing a basic build again. Build build comes in a second. So now in the test, we do have a, a build again. We can do CBT run. Only that now, because it's just a, the standard build file which we've seen before, it's not connected to its parent in any way. So it doesn't have Memonite in there, it doesn't have a dependency on this. Um, the simplest way to do this is to just import, just uh, with uh, mix in.test. Now, you auto this is basically how you do plugins in CBT. Just inherit a trait, it will inject stuff. Um, so now we can actually do this. And now it works. But in, it, you can also do this by hand very easily. Basically, the test project depends on the main project, right? So it's just a dependency. We can say, hey, we have a build dependency on the project directory is in every build file. It's the directory of the source files you're compiling. So in case of the test build, it would be the test, test folder. But we want to go one up 
So basically our test project depends on the main project. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and that's basically the most important things to know. So with just this concept, you can build, just by having these little builds depend on each other, build rather complicated things if you need that. Um, with a very, very small API and very little, simple building blocks. Let's see what else I have on my list to show. Um, right, uh, there's some, some useful helper stuff. Uh, so you can, when you do CBT run, or any CBT command, uh, there's a dash D log, which has a few different things you can ask for, like tell me something about the time, how much time did things take? Actually, just printing out, in this case, doubles the, the runtime um, because the overhead of CBT itself is so low, but the, the printing then. So um, if we run it without this, it takes, uh, yeah, it takes about, uh, yeah, a tenth of a second, which makes it pretty, feel pretty interactive, right? Tenth of a second is pretty responsive. And this is kind of how it, break, how it breaks up. Um, so you can analyze uh, what takes how long and, and what happens there, different, different logging commands, and this is also something that, that uh, will be expanded over time. Mm. There's a, in, in this tools uh, um, command in CBT, you have a couple of, of things at your disposal. For example, you can use CBT's resolver to resolve something like, uh, the Scala library, and what you get, oh, it's, it's tools. And what you get back is a path to the Scala library, or you can do something more sophisticated like, um, uh, oh, right. Um, now we depended on, now we basically said we want this Maven dependency, and it generated a complete class path for it. Um, one of the things that, that I try to achieve with CBT is that it interoperates nicely on the command line. So uh, here we just created a class path and we can, for example, do scala-cp, use this class path. Uh, I'm in fish shell, so I use round parentheses rather than the back ticks. Um, and now we're in a Scala REPL that has all the dependencies right there to just experiment with, with stuff. Uh, so import, let's see. So we imported some stuff from this library. Okay. Um, oh, and this this way you can also base, you can also uh, create a REPL for your uh, for your project. Let's say here we do CVT. Uh, the command is class path, which would give you the sole class path, and then we can do. So, basically. Um, Oh, let's say it's, I think it's top level, right? Right. The command line interoperability is something I always missed. Um, that, that makes it just much, much nicer to integrate with other tools and being fast from the command line. Um, right. Yeah, I might go into, I might, if I have some extra time in the end, I might go into some other things. Yes, please. No, I actually wrote a custom resolver. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the question was which resolver is used? Um, and the answer is that CBT comes with its own resolver, and I have a slide about this in a minute. So basically, now I just wanted to give you a feeling how it is to work with this tool, and now we'll go a little bit more into detail. Um, uh, yeah, different things. So and I'll, last time I talked, about, so I talked about CBT once before at a different crowd, and some people went out of it with like, okay, that's all nice, but why would I use it over SPT? Um, so I'll, I'll try to put them aside a little bit and show in detail some of the things I like um, about CBT. So one of the things, yes, is resolving, because we all know that SPT, because of Ivy, can take its time to refresh dependencies. With CBT, it's just instant, basically, because it just caches stuff properly. Um, <laughs> And uh, that's why it also works 
without problem offline if you have everything downloaded. You will not try to re-download stuff. Um, the CLI, the command line interface, as, you, as you've seen, is very fast, so it's it's just responsive. Um, oh, and another thing is um, so SBT um, for when you want to loop and rebuild automatically when a file changes, it does polling. So every half a second, it checks if a file changed. I suppose the reasons are maybe the that so the JDK has a file watcher in the built-in actually. But it may not have been available back when SPT was developed. Plus, it doesn't work very well on OS X. It has, by default, every 10 second polling on OS X. Um, but uh, there's actually another, like a year ago or something, somebody implemented a native version for, uh, for OS X. So one advantage that CBT has, it builds on newer tech that didn't exist when SPT started. The API is very simple. We all know how to write classes. We all know how to override members. We all know how to call methods from other methods. So, and, and the number of methods that, that you have in, inside of the build class that you inherit is, is not that many, like maybe 15. Um, and it's very easy to discover because you can just go to the source code and see what methods are there. Um, it's a very kind of, it's a model we all understand. And it's very few building blocks that, that make CBT work. Basically, I had this in, in, in my mind for a while, if, if that may not be enough. And then last year I started experimenting just to see where I hit the brick wall that it's actually not enough. But it seems that you can get away with these at least for 95 or 99% of the use case that we have. There might be use case, I'll get back to that, where um, the model falls down. But I guess for most of the things we do every day, it doesn't. And then the convenience is, I think, very welcome. Also, uh, CBT is just, it's just ne vanilla Scala code. It does exactly what Scala code does. And one thing that bothered me about SPT always is that already in the build.scala files, there is some magical stuff going on with runtime, with reflection lookup of, of names of things. But especially in the build.spt files, it's a dialect of Scala. It's not really Scala. There are different rules in place. And build files are something you don't work on every day. Like every week or maybe every month, you look into your build file and you need to change it some way, and then you don't really remember what these rules are, and you end up copy and pasting stuff and it doesn't work. And, um, or, or you have like this one guy who knows SPT at the company and then he'll do it, but. Um, right, and CBT is also very easy to contribute to because the code is really simple. Um, you can actually, all of you can jump in and like if you did any Scala, um, you'll be able to understand it. There are no monads, there are no um, higher kind of, maybe there's a higher kind type somewhere, but um, plus, so you, you've seen that how you write build scripts using these classes and using overrides, but that's, that's actually a super shallow layer on top of a library that's just library functions. The, the classes are just used to wire it together to, for configuration, because one of the reasons why Scala has object orientation is because it's nice as a module system, or which in a way is configuration of how you put your components together. And, in, and here we can configure using inheritance as well. But still, it's nice to have everything else in a library, because then the in individual components are nicely isolated. You can easily understand them without a lot of entanglement with other things. Plus, it's actually conceivable that somebody would, if, if somebody from the functional crowd could write a non-inheritance-based, maybe a state mode or something, layer on top of CBT without re-implementing a lot of stuff. Um, but it's mostly useful for, for understanding it. Plugins are trivial, because you just write a trait and then you mix it in. Um, you don't have to learn something special how to build plugins. Oh, and one thing sort of special about CBT is it started more as a guilty pleasure, but I wanted to be able to compile CBT without SBT or without CBT, because when the first time you compile CBT, CBT is not there, right? So, um, I mean, you could go ahead and write something like a quick downloader for some, some jars for the Scala compiler or something. But what actually happens in CBT is CBT bootstraps in a few phases. It's similar to something like Gentoo. The first phase is small, a few hundred lines written in Java. So you need to have a Java compiler installed, which then compiles this Java code, which um, has the downloader for the Scala jars in there. Then it downloads the Scala jars, in the, well, the, the incremental compiler, basically, and all its dependencies, use that to compile the next stage, which is Scala code that includes the full Maven resolver, 
which is then used to download any additional dependencies that CBT has to compile the final stage where that's fully fledged. Um, the nice thing about it is you can basically install just by cloning the GitHub repository and call the bash script in there, which then triggers CBT to compile itself and run. And you have the sources right there. So if you change CBT in any way, the next time you run it, it will detect changes in itself and recompile itself, and those will be immediately in effect. So you can just change code and immediately the very quick feedback cycle to change it. And since the code is also easy, it would, should be possible for each one here to very, very easily extend functionality and contribute back to it without yeah, putting, investing a lot of learning into it. There's, I guess the, most, the, the hardest part of CBT is class loading and cache invalidation. Yes. The naming thing. No, the naming was... The naming was fairly, fairly straightforward. <laughs> um, right, so that's, you would install CBT by cloning the GitHub repository, putting it in some folder, I guess some linking the, the bash script in there that, that, trigger, that runs it, and then that's how you use it. Um, also something that I found sometimes uh, annoying with SBT is that you build, you have these uh, tasks that can depend on each, other's, uh, on each other in different... Um, scopes. All oh, right, the test and the main project thing were com configurations earlier. Now I'm talking about scopes. Scopes is where tasks depend on each other in certain scopes. Um, but sometimes you can reference a task in a scope that actually is not in this scope. And then when you try to build, then you get some error message like, oh, there is no task test in your compile scope or something like that. Um, and it can, can be unintuitive to figure out where stuff is or... Um, Here's just methods. It's very easy to discover with, with the tools we have and with the knowledge we have. The bad news is CBT is very new. So I really, uh, I did some experiments last year in October and I really started working, spending a lot of my free time on this only in January. Um, and there are likely bugs, some of which I know, some of which I have a slide about. And they're probably missing features for some things like build, put it all in a single jar or deploy it to AWS code deploy or things like this. Um, and obviously there are very few plugins. Um, on the other hand, SPT is very mature, very proven, fully featured. There are lots of plugins for everything available. Um, and uh, yeah, also CBT's model, how to describe builds is different. SPT has proven that it is very, very powerful and you can do basically everything you want, or anything you want in SPT. Um, CBT uses a simpler model with the inheritance, so that it still needs to be shown that it actually scales to most of the use cases we have. I've, I've built uh, a significant chunk of our code base at work with this just to kind of try if it actually works, and it did. So I was able to run the tests for it and, um, and resolve all the 30, 40 dependencies and their transitive dependencies with it. There was one thing that failed, I'll get into that. Um, but that was only used for debugging, so I could just remove it. And um, also, I'm still planning to clean up some of the, the APIs. So if you use it now, you will have to adapt a little bit step by step uh, as, as the APIs inter the, for builds will be cleaned up. The good news on the other hand is since last weekend, it's basically feature complete for a first version. It does everything I would need for open source projects or for smaller projects, um, deploying all this, I'll have an overview in a minute. And it's easy to fix and contribute to. So if you start using it for, for some things and you run into bugs, it's, it's actually conceivable that you rel relatively easily can go in there and fix them or add the feature you're lacking. And a small community has emerged already. So I pre presented it at NE Scala in, uh, on, the, on the east coast of, of the US and there are a few people already around it and we're active on Gitter and active in, in GitHub and uh, people are contributing some things. So, and there seems to be quite some yeah, excitement for some people, the ones who, weren't, who were not like, oh, why would I use it? But hopefully that's clearer now. So, um, very easy to write plugins. It's mostly easy to debug, and that's also something I care about, so that's something I will put effort in, or I hope the community puts effort in as we go along to make it easier to under understand over time. Um, yeah, try, try it out for smaller projects. Um, right. So, one thing that's also nice, you compose builds, right? You had the main project and the test thing, and if you have a multi-project build, you would do it the same way but you can actually do it in a way that you don't have a one large script where you describe everything and then uh, which generally 
for also forces you to have everything in one Git repository, you can compose lots of smaller Git repositories. SPT supports that as well. It's not very well advertised or, or as well documented or known. Um, with CBT, it's, it's very, very, uh, yeah, suggested to do, to, or yeah, supported to do things this way. And it is allowed to compose builds that use different CBT versions into each other. Um, and the way it's, it's implemented is that if CBT sees that there is a different build that's bound to a different version of CBT, then it will download, or well, it will check out this version of CBT and compile it and basically tunnel through it and communicate with this other version that is used to compile this build. It's also very encouraged to put dependencies on GitHub and depend straight onto the Git commits, which would, if it's a CBT build, it would download it and build it so you can depend on, like, really fine-grained, try the different hashes or upgrade in smaller steps and potentially even develop and deploy some libraries without even going through, through Maven. Um, obviously, there's, there's deploying binaries has an advantage in terms of compile time. Um, and I'm, so I, where I see it going potentially is that there might be a mapping created between what hash corresponds to what binary version. So Maven could be used as basically just a stupid cache for binaries, which is used when, when they're available or when they're not. But that's, that's kind of future music. Right now, it's, it's, uh, it's really you can use, use source dependencies uh, in a very, very easy way. Um, right, and, and a few features I added recently. So you builds are reproducible because you can build, bind your build scripts against a particular version of CBT. So you know, even if you upgrade your local CBT, it will still work because it's, you're still using the older one for that. You can do cross builds. Um, yeah, dynamically override the, the version of Scala version, which was needed for some things. For example, you can, when you do, uh, yes, I found myself with SPT often uh, alternating my version number between some number and some number dash snapshot. And uh, in, in CBT, if you want to deploy snapshots, you can just, there's a, um, a task publish snapshot, which publishes a snapshot. So some background. Um, basically, one, one of the fundamental ideas I have is, or one of, one, of, one of the things I think is builds aren't special. They are a programming, like a software problem, like all other software problems. And we should use exactly the same tools we like and that we find convenient to solve that problem. Like, uh, every other problem, which is just write Scala code. And so CBT tries to give you the tools to, to do that. And the basic building block is build composition, which subsumes a lot of features that, that, CBT, uh, that SBT actually has. It subsumes the, the scopes, it subsumes the, uh, conf well, the configurations, um, yeah, and the multi-projects. And uh, the methods being, tasks being methods and calling each other subsumes, I think, the scopes and the axes and some other stuff. So it's fewer building blocks. Also, yeah, it's a Scala library uh, internally, which is easy. Um, stuff we know, that's all I talked about, this all, okay. Oh, if uh, the people who have been around back in the SBT 0.7 era may see some similarities just by how you write the build scripts was actually similar back in the day in 20, I think it faded out in 2010, something like that. Um, I mean, lo everything underneath is, is new and, and uh, there are some differences and also some simplifications even to SPT 07. But just the fact that build scripts are classes and configuration happens through overriding methods is the same concept they had back then. Um, right. Now I can go through this. Uh, Right, so how, how is SPT so fast? In, how is CBT so fast? S SPT is fast by having a shell. You start it up, you keep the shell open, um, and this keeps it in memory, keeps the JVM running, and keeps, can, you can, yeah, SPT can keep the class loaders loaded. Um, CBT does something similar, but it basically detaches from this process. This, there is one CBT process that runs in the background that just keeps running, and the command line client just basically connects to it. So it's, uh, it's fast this way. And well, yeah, the, the dependency resolver caches, obviously the jars and, and the other stuff you download, it caches the XML files. It also caches the parsing and analysis of the XML files because POM 
pump files are, are almost like a little programming language where you have like inheritance and overrides and substitution and all that. And at some point I got to the point that just, just parsing and navigating these XML files was the most expensive thing that CPT did. So then I started putting in caching to just cache the results of that. Um, also cache the class loaders memories for CPT itself, for your dependencies. And eventually I want, wanted to also cache the class loaders for your own projects unless it detects changes in the source files, in which case it would invalidate it and, and recreate it, which, which makes it basically instant. Um, it uses the incremental compiler, so uh, Zinc is, is the incremental compiler component of SBT separated out into its own project, and CBT also uses Zinc. Um, I, I found that Zinc, just calling Zinc, has a, a constant overhead of something like uh, 50 to 100 milliseconds, so I, I kind of have a guard in front that checks if I really need to run it. If nothing changed, I don't even need to call Zinc. It, uh, so CBT has support for concurrently running tasks as well as concurrently running builds. Um, for the tasks, you would manually go ahead. It's already configured for downloading, but you would, could manually go ahead and say, hey, call the, like my new task calls these four tasks in parallel. There's a command to say, hey, run them in parallel. Um, on the level of builds, CBT understands your, your dependency graph, including the builds in there, right? So you have the, the projects that are uh, the projects of your own build, which depend on each other, and then they, they depend on jars somewhere on Maven, and this whole thing forms a directly uh, direct acyclic graph, and CBT understands this, this graph and can run stuff in parallel. Yeah, the native triggers, I talked about that. Oh, also interesting, so when with the file triggering, I can show you that in a second actually, with the automatic recompilation, SPT only watches your sources of your project, the test, the test files and then the sources. CPT also watches your build files. If you change the build file, it, you can rebuild. It watches its own sources. So when you change CBT itself, it would detect that and recompile your project. So you can have a, like a nice feedback cycle across everything. It has a few dependencies, Zinc obviously, Barbary Watch Service is the thing that gives you uh, native, the files, like, uh, yeah, native OS X support for, for watching file changes, um, JGit to download source dependencies. Um, the GPG command line tool to sign things when you publish them to, um, to Maven. And Nailgun, which is a helper tool to keep the JVM running and connect to it from a client, which makes uh, CBT fast to be used from the command line. So, <clears throat> Yeah, I, so I, I did implement my own Maven resolver uh, just to see how far I would get with this. And it's, it's not complete, so it doesn't by far implement the full Maven spec. And one thing um, I know that is missing is version ranges, which is something that's supported in, in Maven. However, only 1% of the Scala packages on Maven Central actually use version ranges. And uh, for example, in our build that I tried, we did, I didn't run into this problem except for one library that we used for debugging printing. Um, but I suppose that with some project you would run into this problem. Also, the resolver I wrote doesn't uh, support Ivy. However, there is another project going on right now called Corsair, and I encourage all of you to check it out actually. Even for SPT, there's an SPT plugin that replaces Ivy in SPT with Corsair which is much faster, and you get away with the resolving stuff right now. Um, right, so I, I don't have support for this right now, but it shouldn't be hard, and I, I want to add Corsia support, so whenever the built-in resolver of a CBT isn't enough, you can use the more fully-fledged uh, Corsair, which then works because CBT has its own resolver to download itself and Corsair. I checked that works, and then can use Corsair to, to do download whatever, whatever else you need. <coughs> And uh, yeah, it's, it's very, CBT is very focused on, on just being a build tool and not solving, solving other problems. It's a small code base, like 3,000 lines of code by now. Uh, some, yeah, mostly Scala, some Java stuff in the, in the bootstrapping phase. And it's very, very simple code. These are the supported features right now. You can compile, you can run, you can test, you can generate Scala docs cross-versioning, packaging jars, signing those jars, publishing them to Sonar type. Currently it's hard-coded to Sonar type, but it should be easy to actually extend that to a publish to Ventray or something. Um, you can download jars from Maven or other repositories, uh, and you've, I guess you've seen that, how, how you can add different URLs there. Um, 
file change triggers, yeah, build composition. There's a readme text, um, which is not super extensive, but it would get, get you started with, with what the idea is and, and how you create a build file. And a developer's guide, which gives you a little bit of the overview, what are the folders in there, what are the roles of these folders. A few tips on debugging. Um, right, so how to contribute. Uh, I said it's just a source, you can just go ahead and change it in the Git, repos in the, in the Git clone you have, and then you can just, I mean, submit a pull request, right? Um, extensions are just traits, and they are consumed as source dependencies. So you would write, you could create a, a CBT build, which itself has a dependency on CBT, so which means you can write a trait that uses stuff from the build class or something, and then you push this to, to GitHub, and then you can have a different build just depend on it as a source dependency. So it will pull in this trait and use this to, uh, together with CBT. What's next? So there are some uh, bugs which I want to fix in the short term. Um, one is that uh, yeah, there's uh, some bug with, with uh, build composition and class load, uh, in, in, with class loading and build composition, which uh, if you compose builds and tie them to particular CBT versions, you may run, you may, you may get abstract method errors. I expect it to be easy to fix. Um, generally, the trickiest thing turned out to be really uh, class loading and invalidation of the cache class loaders. And if you run into a problem where it's not really, like you change the code, but it's not reflected in what's happening, or you get abstract method errors or, or uh, class not found exceptions or something, you can always kill the nail gun process and just make it restart, which is like kill all, kill Java. Or there is CBT direct, which you, the direct keyword is something you can prefix to any other command, direct run, direct compile, direct class path, which just bypasses nail gun and just uh, runs it and kills the JVM. It adds like a, about two second overhead. So you probably don't want to do it usually, but it, if you run into a bug, it allows you to bypass it. Um, and in rare cases, I didn't have that a lot, but sometimes it may help to just kill the, uh, the Maven cache or the, the Git um, dependency cache or g kill all the target folders, obviously. Oh, and one thing that's not supported right now, uh, but should be, is if you have diamond dependencies in your own build projects where um, two projects depend on the same project and then another one depends on those two. Um, I, th I didn't try it, but I think you would get it uh, run into class loader issues right now, but I don't know how to fix it. Um, right, things I want to support in the near future, having Git dependencies on actual subfolders of projects because, for example, in the CBD project itself, the plugins are in a subfolder, so you kind of need to tell it, hey, go into the subfolder and the build in there is the one I actually want to consume as a dependency. Uh, Maven version ranges, integrating Corsia for, for having a fully fledged resolver in case the one CBT ships with, which is like 60 lines. Uh, doesn't work. Um, more documentation and tests. Basically, it's, it's feature complete. So everything now is uh, maybe, maybe some smaller features that turn up to be missing, but generally stabilizing, adding documentation, that. And uh, so there are some other people contributing, or their contributions in progress. So uh, Rob Norris is uh, working on uh, support for TUT, which is a documentation, man, like a manual generator. Then uh, Katrin Schechtmann is working on Scala.js support. And then there is a Google Summer of Code project over the summer where uh, um, uh, this guy Michael will experiment with running CBT completely in memory, where you basically go ahead and sync source files from disk with a virtual file system on the JVM, and then let the Scala compiler run against this virtual file system and produce class files in memory, package them into jars in memory, publish them straight from there into Maven, um, which could potentially give speedups, but I kind of want to know what the, what the speedups would be there. I mean, removing all disk I.O., right? The other thing is, because CBT understands the dependency graph very well across all the projects, across different CBT versions, and can r compile stuff locally in parallel, it can also go ahead and schedule those to a cluster. So it would actually be nice to see how it performs put, put pushing these builds to AWS Lambda or, or Mesos. So these two things will happen over the summer, just more on the experimental side. Yeah, and he also has pull requests open for like a, a CBT clean uh, that kills the target folders and a launcher script for Windows. Right now I, it only comes with a bash script. Um, 
Right. I want to be able to support any Scala version in the build scripts. Right now, in CBT, Justice, and SBT, you're tied to this Scala version that, that CBT uses in the script, but it should be easy to actually support any Scala version. So you can use it with your libraries that you normally use. And uh, basically, adding functionality to your build scripts is really just have a build for your build. Did I actually show that? Maybe I didn't. Uh, that, uh, right, just makes libraries available to your build file itself. And it would be nice eventually to have interoperability with SBT, so you can embed SBT builds into CBT builds. So what does CBT actually stand for? And a lot of people ask me that and always made a suggestion what it might mean. I was just thinking about compositional because you're composing builds, but people were like, hey, is it the complex build tool or the cool build tool or the CBT recursive build tool or the composable build tool like the record stuff? But the suggestion I heard the most, which I didn't even think about myself, was is the Chris build tool. So yes, it's now the Chris build tool. And hopefully in hopefully this gets some traction and I would love to kind of rename it into the community build tool after it does. <laughs> so so that, that's it, I guess. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Uh, you, you, you first, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not quite clear on uh, how does CBT handle it or how does it represent uh, dependencies which aren't on source changes? I suppose I have a, a general the build task which takes one file as input and generates another file as output and should only run if the input file changed. Uh, how do I represent in code if I just add a method to the build class? Uh, how do I represent the fact that it depends on this and should uh, be run when that I, input changes? Um, I don't fully understand. So, I mean, basically, you want to rerun something when something else changed, right? Yeah, like, like classic make. You have a dependency graph. Uh, you need as input uh, some notion of things that can change. And the basic thing that can change is a file, but how do I tie a file change, which is not a source file, but a, a, a diff some other kind of an input file, to a build task? So ba ba basically, uh, CBT, every, every single CBT build, and you can compose multiple of them, right? Every single CBT build monitors the files it's responsible for and remembers when it last compiled them successfully, and compares that to when those changed, and then mm -hmm. that's not... No, be, uh, I'm specifically asking, what if, the in, if some of the input files are not so, Scala source files, not compilable as such, there are data input files or JSON or whatever, something, that I, something extra, which in the build process is used to generate some output, maybe even some generated code. So right now it only uses the it only looks at the source files. So if you have other files that change and, and would generate source files or something, you would have to in, uh, add that manually. But you can uh, basically there is one member in the in the build which is the files that trigger reruns of tasks. You could just override this and make it watch other files as well. Okay. So it's That's yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so, how, how granular is the dependency tracking between tasks and builds? Is it on the task level? Um, so, CBT understands how builds compose. It does not understand how tasks compose. Right. So, so that's a major difference between that. And that is and that is a major difference. However, since a lot of things that is somehow or some things that are somehow handled in ta with tasks in, in SPT is actually handled with builds in CBT, you get it didn't it wasn't a problem for all the stuff I tried. Mm -hmm. and, and and the um, dependencies are, are specified explicitly or is it analyzed by by, by CBT? You mean well, what do you mean the, what what's analyzed? If, if if for example I have two uh, two builds that. Well, when B depends on A, do I have to explicitly say that B depends on A, or if I just reference uh, uh, a task for, from A or, uh, or so, some sort of resource from A, is the dependency inferred? By no, you would have to you would have to put uh, one into the dependencies of the other. That's explicit. So we have time for one more. 
Uh, are there any plans for support for like IDEs and you know, other tools that support CBT? Um, so I have a lot of trust in the IntelliJ guys once they get interested in this. They're usually very quick at supporting stuff. Um, and, and since CBT is really simple, it's generally simple to kind of connect to it. But uh, I'm, there's, I mean, it's, it's relatively new, so I'm not in touch with anyone about that. I'll be speaking at Scala Days as well, though, so, and I'm sure they're there, so there will be some discussions, I think. All right, thank you very much. Oh, and we, we have a Gitter channel, zivokt slash CBT, so. <laughs>